Hi, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Give a clap if you can, and then I'll get started. Thank you. I'm just, I'm so sorry that I'm not there in person. Um, the flights did not really work in my favor, but I wanted to get started and thank the society and the organizers of this conference to give me the opportunity to talk with you about high-risk pregnancy and delivery methods. As Natalie said, I'm a high-risk obstetrician and clinical geneticist by training, and I currently live and work in Rhode Island. Next slide. Today, we're gonna to discuss the effects of pregnancy on connective tissue disorders. We're gonna learn about potential risks and considerations for a pregnancy, and we're gonna to acquire tools and resources for you to use in your journey to become a parent. Next slide. When we say EDS, there's now 13 different types affecting skins, joints, ligaments, and vasculature and internal organs. The connective tissue disorders um, affect our skin, ligaments, bones, and blood vessels. Connective tissues provide strength and elasticity to the structures in the body. And individuals with EDS can have flexible or loose joints, fragile skin, chronic muscle, muscular or skeletal pain, and sometimes have cardiovascular issues. Most forms affect collagen proteins or enzymes involved in the collagen biosynthesis. And inheritance is mostly autosomal dominant for the common types. And then there are some that are rarer um, that are recessive. For the autosomal dominant types, the, path, the chance of passing this on to offspring is 50%. And um, with the autosomal recessive, both parents have to be carriers to pass on this condition. And then sometimes these things can result just in the baby and not really be going through a family. Next slide. So when someone comes to talk to me about EDS, the most common question I get is, is it safe for me to have a baby? And really there's not a quick answer to this question. There's a lot of things that go into deciding if and when pregnancy should be undertaken. And in most cases, it's important to first consult with a pregnancy specialist, potentially genetic counselor or geneticist, and also a cardiologist prior to getting pregnant. Lots of women can have a healthy pregnancy, but it's important to have all your ducks in a row to ensure that you and your baby have the best outcome. Next slide. Normal physiological changes of pregnancy have effects on the body as um, uh, Dr. Main also talked about. So the cardiovascular system, we see increases in blood volume, cardiovascular output and heart rate. These can all put increased pressure on the vascular system. It can also have sometimes a, mostly a positive effect for people with POTS, but can affect their symptoms. In the GI system, the effects of progesterone, again, can be slowing down for the digestive system and make the esophageal sphinx, sphinx are more loose, which can lead to more problems of nausea, vomiting, and um, heartburn and constipation. Um, we talked about relaxin. Um, in the previous talk that makes joints and ligaments more lax, it can lead to increased joint instability. Um, which there's a different center of gravity when you're pregnant, there can be a higher risk of falls and potentially increased pain in the joints. With EDS, the symptoms can be variable in pregnancy and some people describe their symptoms getting worse, about 30 to 40% versus 60 to 70% say that their um, problems are sort of stable or the same. Next slide. So to discuss the important points about delivery methods, I wanted to talk about some statements and then we're gonna talk about whether they're truth or myth. Next slide. First, we're gonna talk about, um, the first one is persons with EDS have a higher risk of preterm birth. Next slide. So the jury's still out with this. There's mixed data on whether individuals with EDS have a higher risk for preterm birth. Early studies have said yes, um, that there's a higher risk of having a preterm birth or delivery less than 37 weeks or uh, a higher risk of uh, preterm premature rupture of membranes. However, there are other large um, population-based studies that say no, there's not really an increased difference over the general population. With that, I think, you know, we do know when somebody has had a prior preterm birth, we, there are things that we can do to try to prevent another. But for that first pregnancy, right now, we don't have any specific recommendations 
um, different than the general population to prevent that preterm birth. Um, there's a few studies that have been uh, published recently where really we're thinking that if the baby is affected, this is really what's driving that risk of preterm birth in that the baby makes up the fetal membranes and potentially there's, well, there are connective tissues in those membranes and that can put them at higher risk for preterm birth or preterm rupture of membranes. The other thing to highlight is precipitous labor, which is where if you have contractions and you deliver three to five hours after the onset of contractions, this is definitely more common in women that have hypermobile EDS. Um, studies have described this as about 35% of women have this precipitous labor. And so that's just important with counseling that when you start to feel contractions, if you're going to be delivering um, in a, uh, a hospital or a birth center that you need to be there quickly because um, labor and then delivery can come quickly. Next slide. The next uh, statement is persons with EDS cannot have spinal anesthesia. Next slide. Regional anesthesia, this is a myth. So regional anesthesia is usually possible and safe, um, but you need to be seen by an anesthesiologist ahead of time, potentially have imaging um, because women can have scoliosis, Tavlov cysts, vascular anomalies. And these are all important to know about before getting regional anesthesia like a spinal or an epidural. Um, if imaging has been done prior to pregnancy, this can be a CT scan or an MRI, but MRIs are safe in pregnancy if gadolidium is not used. And this is the preferred method to evaluate the spine in pregnancy. There have been reports that individuals have uh, in, uh, resistance to local anesthetics and uh, may not have as best um, relief from the anesthesia. And that's just important for the anesthesiologist to know about as well. So the decision on getting regional anesthesia or medicine in the back versus general anesthesia where you get put to sleep is really defined by a lot of factors. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an individual basis. If possible, it's always preferred to do regional over general anesthesia because that is going to be safer for the pregnant woman or I'm sorry, pregnant person. Um, and so unless there's other contraindications or things. So it's important to see your anesthesiologist ahead of time. Next slide. Next statement, persons with EDS should have a cesarean delivery. Next slide. So in general, vaginal delivery is really well tolerated and cesarean should be reserved for obstetric indications. There are special scenarios with vascular EDS, which I will talk about in the next slide, but just looking at the benefits and risks of vaginal delivery versus C-section, uh, with vaginal delivery, there's usually a better recovery. Um, there's benefits to the baby of getting that slow squeeze through the birth canal so that they'd have um, less of a chance of having problem with transitioning where they take that first breath. Um, the risk with vaginal delivery is that there can be lacerations to the vagina or the cervix. Uh, and then when you're pushing, there's cardiovascular changes in labor. And sometimes there can be problems with wound healing talking about cesarean, so this does prevent vaginal lacerations um, and can potentially prevent uterine rupture, um, which is really the concern with vascular EDS. Um, and the risks with C-section though is that there's higher risk for bleeding and infection, longer recovery, um, and potentially thinking about wound healing. Um, the other thing just to highlight is studies have shown also for specifically hypermobile EDS that there's a higher risk for abnormal fetal presentation, sort of like our um, a person who is a patient in the, she, she talked about her labor and delivery experience. Um, there are ways we can try to turn the baby to have a vaginal delivery, but it does seem that there's a higher risk for the baby not being head down at the time of delivery. Next slide. With vascular EDS in particular, we do recommend a cesarean delivery. Um, the reasons for this is that the vas vaginal lacerations are harder to repair and can result in life-threatening bleeding, and there's the potential risk of uterine rupture. Next slide. Okay, the last statement is that persons with EDS are at higher risk for complications in pregnancy. Next slide. So there are some risks in pregnancy for EDS in general. We think that vaginal lacerations may be a higher incidence or more severe vaginal tears. Uh, 
there is potentially an increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage. And so for that, we can be proactive, sort of having medications available at the time of delivery to um, prevent this. We talked about the abnormal fetal presentation, that maybe the head is not down at the time of delivery, and there's potentially a risk for preterm birth and preterm ruptures of membranes and precipitous birth. Looking at um, prior data, there does not seem to be a higher risk for preeclampsia, stillbirth, or um, maternal death when we're looking at the EDS population in general. With vascular EDS, we do know that the risk of maternal um, death in pregnancy is ranged from six to 50%, but we think with modern cohorts that it's probably like five to 10%. Next slide. So the steps to a safe pregnancy are to plan ahead, assemble your team, and then get good management during the pregnancy. Next slide. So prior to getting pregnant, um, depending on if you're on any kind of medication for your condition, you want to talk to your doctor to make sure that those medications are safe in pregnancy. Um, talking about just, you know, thinking about anesthesia and things, if you want to have imaging prior to pregnancy, if there's any vascular complications to look at the vascular system on imaging prior to pregnancy, talking about the inheritance risk to the child. Um, and that can be sort of tested um, in an embryo if you were doing in vitro fertilization. If we are able to look at the genetic change um, that can be done during pregnancy or after pregnancy. Talking about risks of pregnancy that we've already discussed. And then if you don't want to have any babies to talk about contraceptive options if that is needed. Next slide. So assembling your team, this is a big team that can take care of you to help have a healthy pregnancy. So uh, a high-risk doctor, genetics, genetic counselors, anesthesia, NICU, midwives, doulas, pain specialists, physical therapists, um, and then having nursing teams sort of available because they're going to be very important to taking care of you as well to make sure they're educated um, and having nurses from all these specialties involved. And then sometimes we need a cardiologist, cardiovascular surgeon, and delivering at a tertiary care center if there are concerns for vascular issues in your pre pregnancy. Next slide. So uh, some of the big issues um, with people that have EDS is we want to work on protections of joint and joint health, which I think was really um, nicely talked about in the previous um, talk, so I'm not really gonna go into that. Talking about POT syndrome, it's hydration, good water intake and salt intake, compression toxins, and then there are medications that are safe as well if needed. Um, and that's sort of having an individual talk with your care providers about the medicines that you're going to be taking. And then talking about vascular surveillance and management, um, typically we put people on beta blockers sort of to prevent wall stress um, on the, the blood vessels. Um, for some people, we recommend um, echocardiograms for the um, pregnant person. Um, the, the frequency of that depends on how concerned we are about a vascular event in pregnancy and potentially looking at all of the vascular system during pregnancy with an MRA, which can be safe. And then with pain management, um, we want to avoid opioids if possible, but if somebody has chronic pain and has been using that for their treatment, we try to get them on the lowest doses possible. Um, for people, we want them to take, or you can't take um, any kind of NSAIDs, which are Motrin or ibuprofen, and then working with pain specialists during pregnancy. And then alternative medicines um, for acupuncture, massage, and things for pain. Next slide. And then for anesthesia considerations, we've sort of talked about this already, so I'm going to move um, on to the next slide. Just wanted to highlight, if you do have symptoms of TMJ, that is important to discuss with the anesthesiologist because that can lead to difficult airway management, and they need to know about that ahead of time. Next slide. And this table sort of summarizes what we talk about in terms of mode and timing of delivery. With vascular EDS, cesarean is recommended again, and the timing of that will really depend on what your individual risks and medical history are. But um, we talk about planning from like 34 to 37 weeks and um, term is 40 weeks. And then for EDS, typically before at 39 to 40 weeks. Um, next slide. Postpartum, we talk about um, things just to look as, as talking about joint health, of course, thinking about mental health during and after pregnancy for depression and anxiety, because this can become worse in the postpartum period. 
Um, and then if there's any cardiovascular issues we were worried about to also look at this in the postpartum period because you're still at risk at that time. And then in terms of breastfeeding, um, there has been just for the, the VEDS um, cohort, the, um, a mouse model that said that oxytocin, which is the hormone that is made when your body is in labor and then when you're breastfeeding for milk letdown, um, potentially leads to higher risk of aortic dissection, but that really has not been corroborated in human studies. Um, next slide. So many women can have a successful um, pregnancy with EDS. It's important though to have your plan and make sure you have healthcare specialists to assist you along the way. Next slide. And the summary points again are plan ahead, assemble your team, and then you can use your tools to get through the pregnancy. Sorry, next slide. Next slide. And then, um, you know, the decision to become to par a parent is really an individual decision. And there are so many ways to get there. Um, some people decide to have children themselves. Some people use gestational carriers or surrogates. Some people do adoption. Um, some people decide that they want to be parents to either pets or uh, plants. And really, this it is your decision of how you want to become a parent and if you want to become a parent. Um, and we just want to give people a lot of hope that, um, you know, you can have a pregnancy a lot of the time that will be um, healthy and successful. Next slide. Um, there's the EDS Foundation that has so many resources for everyone. And I put my email up here if anybody has any specific questions. Next slide. And that's really all I have today. So thank you for listening.